Are you fucking kidding me? This is the one y'all been waiting on, right? <laughs> Here's a quick recap. I moved to Los Angeles from New York about five, almost five and a half years ago, right? But then after being out here for about two years, that's when the pandemic hit. And I ended up moving to Corona, <laughs> of all places, ironically. So I was out in Corona, California for about three years had always had designs on like moving back to LA. And what really kind of held that up was I knew exactly where I wanted to move. And when I say like where I wanted to move, I'm talking like I knew the area, I knew the type of situation, I knew exactly where I wanted to move. And I wasn't willing to just move back to LA only to have to move again once my kind of like dream scenario presented itself. Because since I've been out here, I have moved seven times. <laughs> it's crazy. But in any case, I had resigned myself to just waiting until the beginning of 2024 to make a move. So a couple of months ago, like right before my birthday, you know, I called myself window shopping for an apartment and I came across this apartment. I saw the listing. It was located exactly where I wanted. The price was right. It wasn't like, you know owned by like a big corporate entity, you know, privately owned building, which meant a landlord landlord, like a person was, is, you know, is the landlord. Very few tenants, no pets. So I was like, yeah, this is, this is dope. Okay. So I come, I look at the apartment, everything's great. I'm just like, all right, let's do this. And so I put down the deposit and everything, signed the lease. I get the keys. So now I didn't move into the apartment right away. I hadn't planned like the big move, the like furniture and all this stuff. I didn't plan that for like another two weeks after I signed the lease. So I was just bringing small stuff out here like every night <laughs> for like the first couple of weeks or every day, like however you want to put it. So one day, you know, I bring some stuff and I meet two of my neighbors. I meet my upstairs neighbor and I meet another neighbor who lives elsewhere in the building. And, you know, they happen to be outside. However it happened, they happen to be outside as I'm bringing stuff in. So my upstairs neighbor, she's just running off at the mouth. Just blah, 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 blah. And I peeped the type of person that she was already. I was just like, oh, this is a special one. <laughs> this is, you know, she's a special one. You know, she was telling me about how the previous tenant was an abuser, like he was very mean to his girlfriend and, you know, he was an abuser and this, that and the other. And she tried to tell me about the sex life of someone else in the building. And that's when the other neighbor was just like, ah, it, calm down, calm down. <laughs> so they both seemed very nice and everything. And they were even just like, you know, yeah, you know, we, you know, we want to come and meet you and make sure that you were cool. And then my upstairs, future upstairs neighbor <laughs> Is like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm getting a dog. I'm getting a dog, like, tomorrow. And I guess it must have shown in my face, because later on she was just like, uh, I could tell. But in my mind, I'm just like, wait a minute. Like, this is a pet-free building. Like, no, like, no dogs are allowed. Like, it said it in the listing. I confirmed it with the property manager when he showed me around. Like, there are no pets, and you know, I'm like, no, no. And, like, my upstairs neighbor is the only person in this building that I share anything with. Like, the way this building is built, I don't share a wall with, like, another neighbor. Again, like, this was a great thing for me. I'm just like, yes. But I do share ceiling floor with the person above me. 
And even though living underneath somebody like was not ideal, for everything else, I was willing to make that sacrifice. I'm just like, look, I can deal with some someone above me as long as you know they don't go crazy stomping or whatever. <laughs> as long as they don't have any kids. As long as they don't have any pets. So for me, a week after signing this lease, learned that this woman is getting a dog. I was just like, gotta be fucking kidding me. But you know what? I didn't say anything at the time. That's probably by mistake. That's probably my fault. You know, I probably should have, but who knows what would have happened, whatever. And there are people out there who like to, who say that I play the victim when things don't go my way. So I want to make perfectly clear that I am accepting responsibility for not speaking up in the beginning. Certainly, certainly hope that I'm not playing the victim as I'm telling y'all this story, but this is how shit went down. So whatever. She says she's getting a dog, and I'm just like, okay, all right. You know, I just grin, and I'm like, yay. And I'm hoping and praying that it's a small dog. So finally do the big move. The movers bring everything in. Boom, boom, boom. I'm ready to spend my first real night in this apartment. And just noise all night, all night. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? And it's just like unbelievable noise for like the first week. And so finally, when I met my neighbors, we all exchanged telephone numbers. So finally my neighbor texts me, I guess like that Friday. And she was just like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I sprained my ankle and I've been, you know, I've been using an ottoman to get around. And so that's, you know, the noise that you've been hearing. And I'm just like, damn, I'm just like. You couldn't get crutches or anything like a normal person. You know, you're like scooting around the apartment on an ottoman, but fine. I was like, you know what? She reached out. She apologized. She acknowledged that she must be making some noise. I was like, all right, cool. It's like, I hope your ankle heals up. It's all good. But then the noise just didn't stop. It just became different. I realized it was her dog. Dog just leaping I imagine leaping off the furniture, hitting the hardwood floor because we have hardwood floors. So hitting the floor up there is my ceiling. Thump. Boom. Run, run, run. And the thing about it is, it's not just noise, right? It's vibration. So dog jumps off the bed or the couch, hits the floor. Boom. My ceiling. My apartment shakes. And then, in talking about the noise, the noise is amplified. Like, I don't really have much, you know, insulation. You know, this is an older building. So it's amplified. So whatever. So enduring this, you know, for a couple of uh, couple of weeks, you know, I'm at home getting ready for work. Boom. So I text her. I'm just like, hey, can, can we talk? She's like, call me. So we get on the phone. She's like, I already know what you're going to say. You know, the dog jumped off of uh, off the couch and, 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 and onto the floor. And the next thing I know, I get a text from you. So I know what you're going to say. You're going to say the dog makes noise when it does that. And I'm like, well, yeah. And you're also going to say that the dog runs through the apartment. Yeah. And the dog jumps off the bed. And, yeah. I'm like, everything that you're saying is exactly what I was going to say. And man, she let me have it. First thing out of her, well, you know, you're not a quiet neighbor down there. You snore. And I had to chuckle and admit that she got me because, yes, I do snore. You know, to my ex-girlfriends, anybody else that I've ever dealt with, (laughs) anybody I've ever shared a a hotel room or or whatever, I apologize. Y'all know it's true. I do snore. I my snoring is bad. So she's just like, you know, you snore and I can hear it, you know, her bedroom, I guess, is on top of mine. You know, I can hear it at night. My bad. Like, that's a biological function. I can't help that. I can't turn the volume down on the snoring. Like, I don't know what you want me to do. But, you know, we're talking, talking, talking. She will, she's talking. She won't let me get a word in edgewise. And I remember getting pissed and I was just like, you know, she said something about her dog 
you know, there's nothing, you know, my dog is perfect and there's nothing wrong with her. And at that moment, I knew that I was not dealing with a reasonable person. <clears throat> and when she said that, I was just like, oh, okay. I was like, you mean the dog that's not supposed to be in the building? Like, we have a no pet policy. I was assured that there are no dogs in the building. And you brought this dog in. Clearly, you snucked it in. And I was just like, you know, I mean, should I tell the landlord? And she was just like, you, 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 if you tell the landlord, you know, he can't do anything. He's going to lose. I called myself down. And I was like, you know what? Look, I did not call to have an argument. <laughs> I actually called to make a suggestion. Maybe get some fucking rugs, some carpeting or something to lessen the noise when the dog leaps off the furniture and hits the, hits the floor. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I suppose I could do that. But it's going to take a while because I don't have money. I don't have money to buy rugs. You had money to get a fucking dog. Like, that's your responsibility. I, I can't, I don't, you know, that's not on me. You know, that's part of the responsibility of bringing, you know, an animal into a building. You have to be able to control it and you have to be able to deal with, you know, the nuisance factor. So I was just like, please just get some rugs, do something because we can't continue like this. She's like, okay, all right, cool. But weeks go by and quite honestly, like, doesn't get any better. fact it gets worse and i'm just like what in the like what is going on up there like it sounds like they're wrestling it honestly sounded like that they were just like rolling around on the floor wrestling shout out to my man jess he was just like it sounds sounds like a baby dinosaur up there <laughs> and finally I, I you know the last straw for me was just one day where i could hear you know the the dog like doing whatever it was doing but then i could hear her laughing and clapping and whooping and like singing or whatever the fuck she was doing i'm just like yeah you're encouraging the dog to behave like this and you already know like you have some sort of awareness that what you do upstairs can cause noise down here as evidenced by you scooting around on the fucking ottoman when your ankle was broken so how do you not you know what I'm saying? So, at this point, I was just like, well, look, there's no point in reaching out to her again because she's not... Honestly, she's touched. That's <laughs> that's a term that, that we used to use when I was younger. I don't know if people still say it. But she's touched. I don't want to use, you know, terms like crazy, just like all willy-nilly. That's not, you know... I know that, you know, we... we you know, it's the wrong language to use so i'm not saying she's crazy but she's definitely touched so i was like you know what yeah let me just go ahead and reach out to the landlord so i called the landlord i'm just like hey look <laughs> i'm just like my upstairs neighbor got a dog she's had the dog essentially since i've moved in and it's been unbearable and really before i could like really get much out he was like i'm so sorry he's just like we're gonna we're going to take care of that. So I guess he reached out to his attorney and they sent her like a three day notice to get rid of the dog. I was like, oh, well, OK. Now, mind you, I didn't want it to get to this point. I didn't want to like snitch on her, but I can't live like that. Like I can't write. I can't work. I can't relax. I can't invite company over. I can't do anything with all this noise above me. Like, it is a problem. It really does, like, you know, it just infringes on my, my quality of life. Like, I can't, can't be having this. So, you know, like I said, I reached out to the landlord. He reached out to his lawyer. Three-day notice. They're like, you know, if the noise continues or whatever, let us know. Of course, the noise continued. So then they went to the next step. They were just like, all right, eviction proceedings. 30 day notice. Now I'm getting a little pissed because I'm just like, damn, I'm just like, <laughs> we're giving this woman like 
far too many chances. We're being way too nice about this. Like, in my mind, she already, like, broke the lease by bringing this pet in here that she's not supposed to have. So whatever. They sent her a 30-day notice about a week before that notice was up. I guess she supplied them with, like, an ESA letter. Not a service, not, you know, saying that the dog is a service animal, because it's not. But an ESA letter, emotional support animal. They're like, all right, we got your ESA letter, and here are the choices. You either get a different animal, or you control the one that you have. So that's not a nuisance to your neighbors. And honestly, that's fine with me. Like, if she wants to keep that dog, like, it's fine with me, as long as the dog is not making all that fucking racket. Also, I think the ESA letter is fake, but, you know, hey, you know, they... They say they checked it out and they said it's legit, but I think I know where she got the letter from. I have my ways of kind of knowing. I, I think the letter's fake, but whatever. So fine. Today, you know, I had my front door open and, um, you know, I'm just like in the back and I hear my neighbor like screaming. There are only a few people that live in this building and, and blah, 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 blah. You know, uh, uh, psychopath. Uh. So I go to the front. She's standing out there, like, with her phone out, like, recording the front of the building. I'm just like, are you okay? Because I hear you out here screaming, and there's no one out here but you and your dog. Did you, did you complain about my dog? Yes, I did. That just led to, like, a very strange, <laughs> very strange conversation i hesitate to call it a conference uh, a confrontation it's just a conversation but in it you know she went on to tell me how everyone in the building loves her dog and how i am a liar a psycho i'm an abuser i'm harassing her i've harassed other people on this street nobody in the building feels safe with me living here i'm just like well you're not supposed to have the fucking dog <laughs> Uh, but you provide them with the fake ESA letter, so whatever. You got to keep the dog under control. You, you know, you running. You got the dog running back and forth. You know, playing. She's just like, oh, we're just doing it for like thirty seconds. Even if you're only playing fetch inside for thirty seconds, the fuck is wrong with you? You've got this forty-pound dog in this small apartment with hardwood floors. With someone living underneath you, and you think it's okay to make that kind of ruckus? Like, what, what is wrong with you? But the other thing was, like, the language she was using. You know, it's like, I didn't like the optics of that situation. I kept my cool, but I didn't like the optics of that situation. You've got a white woman screaming at a black man in the middle of the day, saying things like, he's harassing people in the neighborhood, and nobody feels safe with him around. Like, those are some... Mighty loud dog whistles. And I know some of you don't want to, you know, hear that or recognize that. But when you've been a black man in America for as long as I have, <laughs> you, you, you know, and that's, you know, honestly, that is why I have kept my cool this entire time. Because I already know that I would be seen as the aggressor. If I truly lost my cool, like if I truly like had let this woman have it, if I had ever been, you know, like just really like loud, and nasty or whatever about things, if I had done stuff like, you know, banged on the ceiling, which I never did or whatever, I could totally see me being positioned as the aggressor, as the bad guy and her as, you know, the delicate, innocent woman that that's so afraid of of what her downstairs neighbor might do to her. So yeah, I called my landlord after that. And, you know, he was just like, look, man, he was just like, you know, one of the horrors of being a, a landlord in California is dealing with problem tenants. He's like, and you're not a problem tenant. And um, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I got the sense that, you know, he would like to get her out, but you know, he has to do things legally. But I get the sense that he's probably tired of dealing with her. I actually called my other neighbor, the one that I met on that day um, with my upstairs neighbor, she was just like, yeah, she's just like, don't worry about it. She's just like, no one thinks anything terrible of you in the building. She's just like, you know, she's telling me that my upstairs neighbor is, she is in fact the liar 
As a matter of fact, I guess one of the lies that she was telling people was that the Barbie movie was actually her idea and it was stolen. So yeah, (laughs) that just gives you an idea of like how far removed from reality this woman is. That she thinks that, or that she's at least been telling people that the Barbie movie was her idea that Hollywood stole. Pretty sure that ideas get stolen in the industry, but uh, there's no way in hell that she came up with anything remotely close to the Barbie movie. But yeah, you know, everyone pretty much assured me, you know, like, that I'm okay, like, not to worry about it. Again, you know, talking to my landlord, you know, I get the sense that he's tired of her, that he probably likes me, you know. (laughs) He's just like, people have lived in that building for years. And that includes my other neighbor. She's been here for more than 20 years. So, you know, it's like, this is a good spot. Like, I dig it. I really do like it. And I mean, I don't know what the future holds, but I mean, shit. I could see myself, you know, being here for a while if I can live and work in peace. Oh, so funny. My dog is quiet. You better have, you better have proof. You better have video evidence. Motherfucker, do you know who I am? (laughs) So yeah, for everybody who was just like, oh man, just put some earplugs in and, you know, ignore that shit. Yeah, I really couldn't. Because again, it's more than just noise. Fucking apartment shaking, vibrating, nonstop, every day. Not only that, but I mean, just couldn't get any rest only been within like the past few days that things have calmed down a little bit a little bit and ultimately you know it's not the dog's fault a dog is going to be a dog it's going to do dog things it's going to act like a dog so i don't even like blame the dog or anything but i do blame barbie So let me tell y'all, answered prayers, answered prayers. (laughs) You know, the past couple of days, it's been raining. And if y'all know me, y'all know that I can't stand the rain. You know that the rain brings me down. And I especially hate it because it's not supposed to fucking rain this much in Los Angeles. It has been raining entirely too much past few days. Nothing but rain, nothing but rain. LA, this was not in the fucking contract. When I moved out here, this was not in the contract. For all this rain, could have stayed on the East Coast. But you know, they say, after every storm comes the sunshine. (laughs) And sure enough, the sun is out today. I got an email from the attorney saying that my upstairs neighbor is getting the fuck out. Jay, please note that your neighbor has given notice that she plans to move out. I don't have the exact date yet, but she is indeed going to move out soon. I was so fucking happy when I got that email. I swear to God, I had a bop in my step (laughs) for like the rest of the morning. I got home. I like blasted Bill Withers' lovely day. I know she she just told like another neighbor, like I overheard because they're standing outside the building, but she's just like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm definitely moving now. And I'm just like, good, good riddance. This is... The conclusion to this story, again, don't know when she's moving. Hopefully she moves by the end of the month. But yeah, it's been confirmed. That motherfucker is getting out. She's taking her rambunctious dog with her. And I swear to God, y'all, I couldn't be happier. And I'm, I'm hoping that I'm finally, finally, finally able to live the L.A. life that I've been trying to live for the past five fucking years. (laughs) So wish me luck, friends. Wish me luck. God, I'm so glad the story has a happy ending.